Sports fans, we're back here on Play It Right, and this time we've got the man to talk about the Gila's program, none other than the Gila's project director, Tab Baldwin at Diane. I'm very excited to find out a lot of new things about what's going on in the Kalamba bubble and uh, yeah. the program. Super excited. Thanks for being here, Coach Tab, and welcome to our show. So how is everybody doing overall at the Kalamba bubble? I know you've been in and out a couple of times, so... How has it been? You know, it's a work in progress. Uh, I think probably all of us have been a part of projects that uh, when you take it from the beginning, sometimes it looks like it can never get to the finish line. But as we get much closer to the finish line, we're beginning to see, you know, the, the evolution of the team, the evolution of the players. We're beginning to see some things come to fruition. But, you know, with our ultimate goal being 2023 and beyond, Mm -hmm. uh, we're still in very much in the early stages, but right now we're we're right in the middle of game preparation for the upcoming game with Korea on the 14th. And, um, you know, it's going to get here much sooner than we will be prepared for, but we will have to do the best that we can to get as prepared as we possibly can. Can you give us an idea of what it's like, uh, like a day in the life of your team in the bubble? Like, what's your schedule like? Well, it's, it's different for the players and coaches. Um, we work uh, on a schedule of about 11 to 12 practices a week. So some days are two practices, some days are one practice. Um, we're trying to manage their energy so that the practices can be as productive as possible. So on those days when we have two practices, so for instance, we'll have a week where we'll go two practices, one day, one the next, two the next, two the next, one the next, two the next, two the next oh. and then a day off, something like that. So those days where they have two practices, they're up at around seven, uh, they get their breakfast and uh, we want them to get that, you know, into their stomachs before usually what is a nine o'clock practice, a uh, couple of hours, <clears throat> then they have the afternoon off. And um, then we usually come into a video session around five o'clock, between five and six, um, depending on the evening practice time. Video sessions last about an hour. And uh, then we go on the court for another couple of hours. And uh, oh, after the video session, you go back on court. On the two a days we do, yeah. And oh. um, and then they're free for the night. Uh, the coaches we uh, we meet after each practice. We watch the practice that we just had, and we watch all mm -hmm. the live parts of the practice. So those meetings last anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours. And then we do that again at night. And that's when we plan the next day's practice sessions after we watch the videos. So the coaches have commonly, they're, they're still meeting by midnight, 12.30. And uh, then we're up at 7.30, 7 o'clock as well. So it's a busy schedule. Wow. Yeah. We love it. You know, it <laughs> sounds like it. Well, no pros in your lineup, uh, Coach Tab. Um, all young guys. How are they responding to the challenge? You were talking about their routine. That's a really hectic schedule. And who have been the players emerging as the leaders of this young crop? Well, you're right, Kenito. This is a, a new adventure for these players. I can promise you that. And um, while they have the energy for it, the mental application is something that we're constantly trying to uh, massage them to be uh, more diligent in understanding the game, understanding what we want from each practice. We're trying to get them, you know, with, with great effort to stay in the moment all the time and, and know that we don't waste any time. So when we're on the practice floor, everything that we're doing counts because we're under pressure. You know, we have games coming up very soon and we want to be as well prepared as possible for those games. And so we require a heck of a lot mentally. Um, 
and then you know it is a big physical demand as well but uh, we think that they can manage that it's the mental part that we see lapses in practice when they they look tired they look uh, unfocused and of course we have to somehow crack the whip and, and get them refocused get them back, get them back. <laughs> you mentioned the word you mentioned the word pressure um, these guys are very young and uh, in the FIBA Asia Cup third qualifying window, we're going up against very experienced veterans. South Korea is coming in with a lot of old guys who've been there and done that. Indonesia is coming in with also their veterans. And then beyond that, in the Olympic qualifying tournament, we're going to be up against Serbia and the Dominican Republic. What are the expectations given the pressure confronting these, these young guys and uh, uh, we certainly don't want to expect too much from these guys. But what about you on a personal basis, Coach Tapp? Well, my expectations are extremely high. And um, I don't mind if other people have high expectations or not. It, it's pretty irrelevant to me. Uh, the reason that my expectations are high is because I understand what these players are capable of doing in any given moment. And they're capable of being outstanding basketball players in any given moment. The ability to sustain that is a challenge. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the quality of the opposition is what puts a lot of pressure on the ability to sustain that one possession after another, plus their inexperience. But those are just excuses not to play well. Okay. And, you know, I'm not, yeah. uh, I'm not given to the world of excuses very much. So they, the players understand, you know, what the coaching staff expects of them. And we know what they can do and what they're capable of. So it's, it's just a matter of getting them to be professional and getting them to, to live directly in the moment that they're in. And, and they know that if they do that, they can play as well as anybody. Being able to do that over 40 minutes or over three games in a six day period or, you know, you know, the challenges of international tournaments. This is where experience would help them immensely and they just don't have it. So we will get that. But while we're getting it, we don't want to fail. Yeah, while you're pulling them up, it seems to uh, you know, to levels higher than I mean, as high as you want them to go. And you were talking about some mental, you know, like really mentally, it's really the biggest challenge. What do you do? Like, if you see like one player like really struggling, you pull them aside, talk to them. You have you have them talk to a therapist, or how do you how do you do that? If you see someone's like really struggling, or or are they all, you know, like living up to it and living up to the challenge well not every minute of course and that is you know part of the problem and when we're in the bubble you know the coaching staff we perform the roles of mother and father and therapist mm. and, and uh, <laughs> dietitian and uh, okay fitness coach and so you know we have a lot of roles to perform and and uh, yeah we really don't want the players you know going up to the room and spending all their time on their devices and so we do give them a lot to absorb intellectually. We give them, you know, in our Viber groups and our Telegram groups, we're sending videos to them quite frequently. We want them to assess them. We want to discuss them. We want them to develop the ability to be kind of coaches themselves, at least to coach themselves and have some of the knowledge that it requires to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but as you said, you know, there are times when it requires – pulling somebody aside and you know it can be a pat on the back it can be a shoulder to sympathize and it can be a kick up the ass I mean you know we, we don't really I don't think within our coaching staff we think that you know that one guy is the nice guy and one guy is the mother figure and one guy is the <laughs> disciplinary the whipper <laughs> yeah we we recognize that as coaches we have to observe and and see problems hopefully before they become big problems. Yeah. We realize that right. the bubble environment is different than, than uh, the normal living and practicing environment. So we talk about that a lot as a coaching staff. And, you know, we try to head problems off, personnel problems off before they, they become unmanageable. And so far, so good. Yeah. Well, Anj Kowami is with you, correct, inside the bubble? That's correct. Can you tell us a little bit about how it's going with him? And do you know anything about the natural, the, the process of, get, of him getting his papers? 
Well, we're, you know, we're very hopeful that it's virtually done at this point. Um, I, I don't have the final answer in front of me right now, but um, we're confident that um, all of the people who have been pushing the process that, you know, from the SBP administration management to the lawyers supporting it, to the politicians who have kind of, um, you know, headed the progress up for us and for the SBP. We're confident they've all done their job. We're confident that, that they all have approached this uh, with responsibility to the country, with responsibility to their jobs, and, uh, you know, with a care for the national program that Anja's citizenship will certainly help us address to a certain degree. So, you know, I, I'd like to think that um, maybe when I wake up tomorrow morning, you know, somebody's going to say to me, everything's done. <laughs> All of us, all of us, when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, you know, Fast as far forward. as is concerned, he's much like the whole program itself. You know, he's a work in progress. Um, there are things that he is very advanced as a, as a basketball athlete. He has a mm -hmm. tremendous motor on him. He pursues the ball better than virtually any player I've ever seen. He, he has a tremendous level of energy. But from a skill standpoint, from a understanding the game standpoint, he still is relatively inexperienced. And he's going to be exposed when we go up against some of the great players in great countries. But this is part of the learning curve for him. And the great thing is we're going to have on for 10 to 15 years in that role. Mm. Uh, even if we bring in other players to compete with him in that role, at least it will be competitive. Uh, I don't think any of that is a bad thing for our program. Well, Coach Fab, um, one challenge in this pandemic is the lack of mobility of a national team like ours to compete overseas. So we're all in this bubble. We're playing with each other. We're playing against each other, but we're not getting the exposure of going overseas and playing against international teams. So right. this is going to be like a baptism of fire for a lot of these young guys. When we throw them into the fray and into the lion's den, um, how do you think this is going to play out with uh, the limited experience of our players just practicing among themselves and then all of a sudden going up against South Korea and Indonesia, Serbia and the Dominican Republic? Well, Kenito, it's a great question. It's very hard to predict, of course. You know, I mean, but the smart money would be on that they will struggle because of that, that there will be moments that uh, the occasion or, or the magnitude of the event gets on top of them as, as a group of young players, and they don't look as good as they should. They don't reflect the training that's been done. And I think that happens to all teams, but particularly, as you say, in, in this world that we live in now, so many of the mechanisms used to develop our teams, develop our players, we don't have available to us now. It's not just the overseas tours, it's the ability to even schedule and get games within the country here. Um, right. Everything is is subject to, you know, subject to the, the government mandates, the health and safety protocols. And, uh, but you know what, that's life. And, yeah. you know, if we all want to go in our corner and have a little cry when we come out of the corner, we're still going to be in the same position. So I prefer to say that, you know, let's be grown men and, and let's hit all of our challenges head on and, and uh, rise to the occasion. Well, we're going to be out there fighting, that's for sure. Well, there's no question about that. You know, yeah. I, I think these young men are, are uh, hungry for the fight as a lot of young people are. We had a great chat the other night. Um, and, and it was evident that, you know, these young men, as we all know, young men are prone to be there. They think they're bulletproof. They think that nothing can <laughs> affect them and nothing can hurt them. And so well, that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but, you know, we also need to be realistic. So we painted some pictures for them that, uh, you know, tried to, to sober them up a little bit and make them realize that challenges mm. are coming tough challenges and there are going to be failures, but we want them to be failures in the moment. And we don't want those moments to drag on. They're not bulletproof as we all know, but uh, we want that, that mentality, but we also want the realism that maybe they don't have yet. Yes. Coach, what about um, Kai Soto? As we all know, he's, you know, on his way to the NBL, but he did commit to the Gilas. Do you have any 
Um, I understand he is supposed to be joining Gilas before heading off to Australia. Do you have any um, info on the timetable for him joining the team? We don't have firm timetables yet. Now, there's still a lot of discussions going on, uh, a lot of moving pieces based on the quarantines, the travel quarantines, Kai's schedule, All right. and, uh, what the requirements would be for him here. And, uh, you know, all I can say is that everybody is, is trying. Um, but I'm not involved personally in those discussions, so I can only conjecture. Um, I get some feedback, but uh, at the same time, I'm kind of like you. I'm kind of waiting for a final decision. I don't really want to know too much about the discussions because they're just a distraction to me. Yeah, uh, just have to Kai work with what you have, work. right? Yeah, when he yeah, shows up. Yeah, you just have up, to work with what you have. And we'll try to make smart decisions around uh, his preparation. And um, I mean, you know, he's like he's like any player in the world, except younger than most. And that is they can't walk in and be a, a synchronized basketball player uh, in in you know, overnight. Um, I don't think back in the old days of the Wild West, they bring a new can can girl in her and put her in the line and expect her to kick at the same time as everybody else. Right. So, um, ours is a little bit more complicated than a can can line. So you know, we're going to have to do our best. Yeah. So my, my last two questions, Stab, would be, number one, is there a chance that uh, the Gila's team will be able to play practice games with any PBA teams, um, assuming that the PBA will open its season in the middle of June, and even in preparation for the August FIBA Asia Cup? And number two, talking about the FIBA Asia Cup, and that'll be in August in Jakarta, will there be a chance to bring in additional players, maybe like a third year of Vena, or maybe even a Jordan Clarkson for that competition? Those are my last two questions. Uh, the answer to the first one is we're very, very hopeful for that to happen in the short term and in the longer term. Uh, but again, we're talking about a lot of parties being involved in that decision. And we're talking about health and safety protocols. We're talking about can they come in the bubble? Do we have to leave the bubble? If we leave the bubble, can we go back in the bubble? So you begin to yeah. see, you know, some of the complexities of, of that decision. But believe me, the SBP and the PBA, they, they their hearts are in the right place. They're working on it. Uh, they're trying to make it happen. Um, and we desperately need it to happen, but it may not happen. But I would think as as the situation eases probably in by July and preparation for August, a whole nother world of possibilities may open up. We may be able to go overseas and tour. We may just have to stay here and, and play some PBA games, or we may, who knows, there may be another surge or variant of this thing. And we all run and close our doors again. As to, uh, as to the players, uh, definitely after the June games, we plan on reassembling in July at some point and expanding the bubble again, bringing in uh, more players and uh, trying to broaden both the player, the player pool that will vie to compete in August, but also bringing in more players to continue the process of introducing them to our culture, introducing them to our system and looking ahead to the future to get as broad a pool, as big a pool as we can, so that we aren't left, you know, wishing we had players when it comes time to select the team. Right. Sounds good. Well, coach, you know, we're all behind you. The whole country is behind you, cheering for you, putting pressure on you. But we appreciate your hard work, your dedication. And most of all, I really love your optimism and your no excuses. Uh, type of uh, thinking to be able to excel for the team. So thanks coach and hopefully we can get to see some of the games of the Gila squad. Yeah, I hope so too and, and thank you all very much for the opportunity to spend a few minutes with you and uh, you know, I wish all your listeners, uh, please stay safe, stay healthy and uh, you know, keep saying our prayers that this thing will end sooner rather than later and uh, I just wish the good Lord's blessings on everybody. Thank you, Tab. Thank you, Tab. We'll see you. Thank you all.